Hey, what's up, wrestling world? This is Augusty Jones, and I am covering both nights of WrestleMania 40 XL, the biggest WrestleMania of all time, and everything else. I was going to do it separately. I even recorded night one, and then I was going to record night two separately. But, you know, it's just, I'm, I'm still trying to figure out how to do all this. So, bear with me because this review. I don't know how long it's going to go. I don't know how it's going to be. I don't have it like uh, put together like that, but I'm just I'm trying. So um, I'm about to go ahead and knock out night one right now. And then I'm going to get to night two a little bit after that. But um, I'm going to do my best. Hope you guys like it. And if you do, you know what to do by the end of this video. But let's go ahead and get started without any further ado. So just to overall look at the whole thing, night one was not as good as night two night two felt like a better put like a set of matches better matches and then it kind of felt like it breezed through like i i don't remember if it was like way less matches but it just felt like night one was overly long and it was filled with like not too many like great matches but night two just from the start was actually pretty good all the way into the end so uh, just getting that out the way, but to start off the night of night one, we had Coco Jones singing the national anthem and just looking incredibly beautiful, uh, as well as we had Lil Wayne there to give a small little cameo and it was very insignificant. Like he literally performed a little part of a Millie and then he, that was right before Jay, uh, came out for his match and it just kind of like, you know, just stopped. And then, you know, Jay came out to his original theme. And then that was the end of Lil Wayne. I don't know why he was there, what purpose he served. It, it was whatever. It was. It didn't add anything to Jay's entrance. So they could have did without it. But the stage itself for WrestleMania actually looked really, really fucking good. I really liked the look of it. And um, so, and one of the things that I noticed the in night one was the first three matches all consisted of every member of the judgment day you had becky lynch versus well you had rhea ripley in um the first match then you had damian priest and uh finn balor and even uh jd madonna helping out in the tag team ladder match or whatever the six man or you know the tag team ladder match or whatever and then you had Dominic Mysterio teaming up with Santos Escobar against his father, Rey Mysterio, and Andrade, which I did fuck up. I'm, I'm not even going to, like, surpass it or anything like that. Like I said, I've been in and out or whatever. I've been trying to catch up with it as best as I can. But I did kind of fuck up. I didn't see Dragon Lee getting taken out and Andrade stepping in on top of that. But that was my mistake. I said in my predictions it was Rey and Dragon Lee, but... Hey, I still <laughs> kind of got my predictions right about that. I knew that the team of Ray and whoever else is going to take it. <laughs> but in any case, but some of my matches of some of my favorite matches of night one was the Rhea Ripley match. The, and surprisingly, the latter match the tag for the tag team titles uh, was was great. The IC match with Gunther was good. And especially the main event. The main event I really did like. But uh, I'm going to get all into that a little bit later. But uh, from that, like the interests, I really did like. I did like Naomi, Jade, and Bianca's uh, entrance, uh, a.k.a. I'm going to just call them Black Girl Magic. I'm just going to refer to them as that because I'm not about to keep saying all their names in order and all that stuff. But I did like their entrance. I didn't like... I, I, and I don't like... And it's not just with them. It's with other matches where you have like different teams come out and then you got their music this music playing and then it cuts off that music playing i don't know like how they can do it differently maybe have uh, i mean because they're not an official team but i don't know it's just something that i don't like nitpick or whatnot but uh other than that great uh diy i like their interest with the whole um DX graphics and their like their attire was kind of DX inspired. Then you had Damage Control. I like how they came out. I love their interest. But um, I actually really liked Rhea's 
interest when she had and I'm I know I'm probably sound like I'm saying it weird but I like her entrance when like the band actually was doing a live performance of her theme song and they announced her to the ring I really did like that but most importantly the entrance for The Rock he had a really really badass entrance just dope as fuck and one thing that I want to call out that I did notice was Xavier Woods. Xavier Woods, I don't know if you guys follow him back in TNA, but in TNA, his name was Consequences Creed. And his whole attire, his look, when he came out for the ladder match, looked like it was reminiscent of that. I don't know if anybody else caught that, but I did kind of like notice that. And I guess you could say it was like a callback and I appreciated it or whatnot. Um, but yeah, just... As far as the attire, um, I did talk about DIY, but also Jade looks incredible. She just looks amazing. Like, I mean, don't get me wrong. All the other women, they look crazy, but you know, Jade just, st just stood out. We all know that she stands out just how her uh, physique looked, but crazy. Uh, Dakota, and I'm not alone with this, looked delicious. She just looked crazy. Like, she looked good as well. Like... I, I'm standing right next to the Kabuki Warriors. She was the standout as far as her attire. And Dakota is just sexy. I, I'm not even going like sugarcoated or anything, but she just looks sexy. Um, and then, of course, Mommy. Mommy looked delicious. You know, so I'm not even going to like surpass that because, yes, she looked good up in there. But uh, not every match was created equal. We had Jay and Jimmy, which was a match that you would have probably thought was really probably would have been really great it wasn't i was disappointed you know it was a match that i thought that they were going to go all out especially with the with what they're capable of uh it was very underwhelming like it just wasn't the match that i think a lot of us wanted and i even said it in my predictions like i thought that i thought they was going to kill it i thought they was going to steal the show and that wasn't the case and i was very disappointed about that especially with them wanting this for so long like that was one of their dreams of facing each other not only tagging with each other but facing each other at wrestlemania they got this one chance and i feel like they kind of like you know dropped the ball on it but it is whatever. And Black Girl Magic versus Damage Control, that match really did feel like a weekly TV show. Like it was could have been on Raw or SmackDown. It didn't really feel like a pay-per-view worthy uh, match. Uh, I, the match itself felt like it was more so just to kind of like show what Jade is made of because she's the one who got the pin and just kind of like giving her a little stuff to do. She was very limited in her movement. She didn't go all out. Uh, and I don't think that they wanted her to do that that much right now. Um, since she's on SmackDown, they're probably going to have her uh, fighting against one of the Kabuki Warriors or just some, a member of Damage Control this coming the uh, smackdown but i mean the match was decent enough it just wasn't pay-per-view worthy it just wasn't a pay-per-view worthy match but um one of the matches that i really did like like i told y'all before the becky versus Rhea match even with becky being said that she was running a, a temperature of 102 she still like went in and she killed it at the beginning, she seemed kind of off, like, you know, she, like it was, you know, like it was bothering her. And I guess like uh, because it was so cold there, too. So it was kind of like two things going against her. She still put on the great performances. And I really liked it, especially the ending with Rhea Ripley doing the riptide on her on the turnbuckle and then in the middle of the ring and getting a one, two, three. I like that. Uh, Truth uh, doing the tag team spot. <laughs> In the tag team match where he was waiting for uh, the Miz to tag him in and then doing the Cena spot. And it was like you knew that you couldn't have our truth in a match without him doing something ridiculous and silly. But um, uh, Ray and Andrade versus Dominic and Santos was a pretty, uh, it was a decent match. It was one of those matches where it could have been spectacular. It could have been great, but it was just more of an entertaining match. It wasn't nothing more to it, uh, especially with just the way it ended. It was it was whatever. But uh, yeah, so 
Like I said, the IC match was good. I was surprised that Sammy took it. I, I was not expecting him to actually win the match or whatnot. <laughs> Because I thought that they probably might keep the belt on, you know, Gunther a little bit longer. And then maybe Chad Gable would be the one to do it. But in hindsight, when you're looking back at things, just the way that it was set up with the way he came out and everything leading up to it. It was like, yeah, they're, they were kind of telling us that, like, he was going to win the title or whatnot. And I mean, I'm, I'm OK with it. I'm not a person that was truly invested in him winning or Chad Gable winning, but I do look at the story and what the crowd wanted, especially when Sami Zayn won the match against Chad Gable and just what a lot of other like podcasters and people wanted online was they wanted Chad to win because they set up the story to do that and now they pivoted uh, another route with it. But I'm okay with it. I'm just curious to see how they're going to go. Are they going to turn Chad, like, bad? <laughs> you know, is he going to turn heel? Is yet to see. But um, especially what he said about, uh, I guess you could say, hinting that if he did win, that he would get the first title shot. So we'll see what happens with that. Surprisingly, going back to the tag team match, uh, A-Town Down Under won the tag team titles. Now, I did say up in my predictions that they were more than likely going to split the titles, and that's how it was. Like I said, they probably announced that on SmackDown at some point or another, but, you know, I'm going off of what, you know, I knew going into the predictions. But um, in any case... A Town Down Under won the SmackDown titles, and to me, it threw me, it threw me off because I'm just like I wasn't expecting it. My picks was DIY and Awesome Truth, which I was half right because Awesome Truth did uh, get the Raw titles, but I was thinking like, why they having it like this? But watching Night Two and seeing that how within the weeks leading up to WrestleMania, how KO and Orton were working together and everything that they were doing, being all friendly, even in the beginning of the match that they had tonight. Uh, it was like, I think that they're lining it up for them to become a tag team, maybe team RKO, which it just kind of like, <laughs> it, 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 what's the word? What's the word? It just kind of like comes together itself, you know? And I think that's the route that they're going because KO already has history with a town down under. So it makes sense. And then, you know, at the, I, I feel like they're more friendly, especially with them coming out at the end of the night with Cody Rhodes. But in any case, I, I think that that's where they're going. But like I said, one of the better main events, well, one of the better matches was the main event with the uh, with the Bloodlines, Rock and Roman versus Seth Rollins at the time, the World Heavyweight Champion, and Cody Rhodes. And of course, if you know the Bloodline win, then Roman and Cody's match will be Bloodline rules match. And so, and if Cody wins, then you know it's just a one on one, just no Bloodline interference. And so, um, one of the things that kind of threw me off about this match was not really anything in the match itself, but what the fuck was Seth Rollins wearing? Like, I mean, he looked like he was going to church. Like, he was wearing somebody's grandma's outfit, just trying to look as ghetto fabulous as he possibly could. And I was just like, what the hell is this guy wearing? I don't know. But, I mean, that's Seth Rollins for you. And then you got the Rock carrying the People's Championship, which he got at the Hall of Fame by uh, Lonnie uh, Ali. And so uh, that, the belt actually looked pretty good. So I ain't even going to lie. Um, and then the introductions with Samantha Irvin. We all know that she's great, but yeah, she killed it in her introductions of the bloodline and everything else. And uh, as expected, the match did start off slow. And but that was just more so milking the energy of the crowd. Uh, since you're going to have after all these weeks of like the back and forth, not really a good setup or not really a good back and forth. But after weeks, people wanting to see Cody and The Rock in the ring together, putting hands on each other or whatnot. And we getting this. And so this is the moment where all this would start to happen. So they were really milking the crowd. Uh, and it picked up as soon as it spilled outside the ring, in which not too long after that, The Rock 
turned the match into a no DQ, threatening the referee that if he starts counting, then, you know, he's going to fire him. Telling him he don't, he know we don't fuck around. Like literally saying that, you know, The Rock, he's going straight attitude. And then, as you know, we already knew that there was going to be a lot of fuckery within the match. Uh, Hit a ref spot and all. And the accidental spear to The Rock from Roman. Now, Roman, his, his, his spears don't necessarily look great. But this one looked like one of the best spears I've ever seen Roman deliver. And he delivered it to his cousin. I don't know if it was really just the way that he did it or just the way that The Rock sold it. But it looked incredible. Uh, and then after that, we had stereo uh, pedigrees from, um, from uh, Seth and Cody to The Rock and Roman. But ultimately... Uh, it ended out how it should have ended, how I predicted it, that the Rock and Roman was going to win. C Cody took the pin because he was the one who needed to take the pin. It made sense. They wasn't going to have Rock get pinned in his first match back. They wasn't going to have Roman get pinned before uh, night two. And then Seth Rollins, he really didn't need to get pinned in any type of case. So uh, Cody needed to do this. And so, uh, yeah, it just... So, not surprisingly, we're going to have bloodline rules for night two of WrestleMania. And so, my overall take, like I said before, in night one, night one uh, was a pretty decent night. It wasn't as good as night two, like far from it. But uh any case, let's go ahead and jump into night two. And if you've watched this far into this review... I want you to go ahead and give me a like if you like what you've heard and subscribe. And I just want to say thank you. So let's go on to night two. Now, stick with me. I haven't really put together these notes like I did night one or whatnot. I want to get this out as soon as possible because I got a lot of other things to take care of. But night two, night two, Stephanie McMahon returns, came out and said a little something, something to the crowd. And I was surprised that they was even going to have that. Because I thought they were trying to keep her away a little bit longer because of her father and what's been going on. And then her name coming up and certain things and whatnot. So, but she came out, said a few words. Crowd was uh, into it. Then we had the uh, War and Treaty come out and sing a song. And one of the things that I uh, didn't mention was how the ring was decorated with sponsorships. Like, it was sponsorship, like, central all throughout the arena. And which I did like it, you know, it didn't bother me at all. But like, uh, we get into the first match. The first match was Drew versus Seth for the World Heavyweight Championship, which was a match that I was looking forward to because, as you guys know, I've said it before, I am a Drew guy. I am a Drew McIntyre guy. That's the person I was rooting for, especially with all the stuff that he's been doing. And this night was bittersweet because, you know, he won it, but then he lost it. But in any case, uh, we had Seth coming out again and just... Some crazy colorful stuff. He had a band kind of like playing his song or whatnot. And uh, just a whole bunch of like colors, colorful outfits going around the ring. It was just a, a celebration before his loss. I guess celebrating the last time he's going to hold that championship for a while. Whatever. Uh, CM Punk, of course, we all know was on commentary. Uh, and just getting into the match, Drew McIntyre right out the gate, hit him with a Claymore, wanting to get it over with. He was tired of his crap and like, uh, he only got the two count. Uh, but yeah, like this match overall was just a great back and forth. I'm just looking at my notes. That's why I'm jumping from that to da -da -da. But like, it was a great match. Had some great back and forth in all of that. The crowd was very much into it. Uh, Drew ultimately in this match, claims his prize and it's a very emotional type of like moment because he kisses his like uh, i believe it's his wife uh once he wins the championship and you know he really kind of celebrates it but the one mistake he did was going face to face with punk and rubbing it in his face and he just continues to troll punk getting really up in his face talking crap to him showing him the title and all that stuff and punk surprisingly got physical he got up he hit like, um, I believe he tripped him or whatnot, but uh, he got him down, took off the brace uh, on his arm and he just started like whooping him and taking, kicking him in the face and everything else. 
And then from that point on is when Drew, not Drew, uh, Priest comes out with the briefcase. I was like, I, I knew it was a a point that this could happen. I knew it was a chance that this could happen. I was just hoping that it wouldn't because everything that they're building up to this point, and I really wanted to see Drew as champion with everything that he's been doing. And then, you know, you got Damian Priest come in. And it says a lot because Drew McIntyre, from what I understand, still hasn't signed a new deal with WWE. So it might be him, like, doing his exit. But at the same time, it's like... They're setting up something with him and Punk. So I'm kind of confused. So hopefully he wins the title back soon. And uh, it's just, I don't know. I'm kind of like, that, like I said, it's bittersweet with this. But uh, overall, I like that match. I really did. When it comes to the next match, the Philly Street Fight Match. Uh, fight Match. Well, Street Fight Match uh, with the Almighty Prophets. That's what I'm just going to call them. The Almighty Prophets because the pride sounds like a stupid ass name. The Almighty Prophets versus the Final Testament. And this match, I liked. It wasn't one of the best matches of the night, but I liked it. It was entertaining and all that stuff. Snoop, this time, was on commentary. Uh, and he was funny as hell with his reactions. Like, Snoop, he was making me laugh all throughout the whole thing. So, I really appreciate that. Bubba Ray Dudley was the special guest referee. Which, Bubba Ray, I, you know... I didn't think he got big again. Like, I thought he was still kind of small like he was before. But I haven't seen Bubba Ray in, like, you know, a long time in the ring and stuff. And he was big. But despite the fact he was just a referee, B-Fab uh, actually inserted herself in the match a little bit, putting Scarlett through a table after Scarlett interfered or whatnot. Uh, then you had the Almighty Prophets doing the Dudley Cross by with like uh what was it i think it was uh matez and bobby spreading the legs of what was it i think it was carrying cross and then you had um his partner i keep forgetting his freaking name uh you had him come off the top doing that wow and then doing the crotch thing and then the whole thing of like getting the tables they did that whole spot i thought they was going to do a 3d through a table but uh matez ended up putting carrying cross through a table but that was after breaking the first table that they set up just by putting carrying cross on there the table uh leg had bent they didn't set it up right and then as he fell through his weight kind of broke it a little bit so he had to go get another table but yeah ap1 after tears like i said put him through a table through a splash and uh yeah it was a very funny and entertaining match uh, well, not fun, funny. Uh, it was a very fun and entertaining match. And it had lots of great energy. So I thought, like, this is a match, if you've seen my predictions, I wasn't looking forward to, but I actually enjoyed. And, uh, yeah, I mean, I, I wouldn't say that this was a mania-worthy match, but this seemed like a match that probably could have been put on, like, the pre-show, but they don't really do that nowadays or whatnot. But in any case, moving on to the next match, uh, we had AJ Styles versus LA Knight. And like I said, I haven't been really watching the the shows on a weekly basis and certain things I haven't really been paying attention to that much. But did AJ Styles all, always have this new music for like the past like week or so? Or is this something new? I don't know. Maybe y'all could tell me. But in any case, um, uh, this match is how the Jey Uso and Jimmy match should have been. They went at each other from the start just going in. And don't get me wrong, Jay and Jimmy did that or whatever. But how the match went on from like beat to beat or whatever all the way to the end is how it should have been. And yeah, this is this shows this is like I guess you could say a peek into another dimension of what Jay and Jimmy really could have been, but they dropped the ball, like I said. And so um, one of the things that I was thinking during the match with this kind of like no love loss between Knight and Styles was that AJ at one point, he literally uh, slammed LA Knight on like the, the hard floor or whatever that's underneath the mats. And he wanted to get the count out. And I'm thinking like, you want to beat the hell out of this guy. This guy came to your home and all that stuff. 
and you want to win by count out like that was just so weird to me but in any case Knight got in and he uh won the match he won the match with the uh BFT and the, the match itself was like I said really fucking great it was really great should have been what Jimmy and Jay Uso's match was but this was like really 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 great the next one is uh Paul the way I have my notes. Logan Paul versus Randy Orton versus Kevin Owens for the United States Championship in the Triple Threat match. And this match, I really enjoyed. I really did. Like I said, way better than night one. Uh, KO and Orton both taking turns beating up Paul. Like, they literally was acting friendly with each other until they realized that, yeah, only one person can win the title. And I want to win it. I know you want to win it. So it was like they were acting friendly, like taking turn, turns, beating up Paul, doing this and doing that, trying to like outdo the other and everything else until it just kind of like broke apart. And they knew that they couldn't do that. Um, Orton kicks out later on in the match after getting hit with the brass knucks from Paul, which was surprising to me because I'm thinking like, that's it. But uh yeah, like uh, we had I show speed being insane, being insane, <laughs> being uh, in the match or whatever, interfering on Paul's behalf or whatnot, getting RKO for his troubles. They did it on the table. Well, he did it on the table, but it, the table didn't break through, but he laid them out or whatnot. Uh, and then after that, you had Paul retain like I really thought it was. I thought they was going to have it. I don't know if they're going to go the route of Knight doing it anytime soon because I have a feeling that the whole Styles Knight uh, drama, this rival, is still going to go on. But like I said, with this, the way this match ended and all the weeks leading up to this match, I feel like they're going to go for it with uh, Randy Orton and Kevin Owens being a tag team from here on. So who is going to be his next uh, opponent? We don't know. But um, really good match. It was fun. I really enjoyed it. Like I said, Logan Paul continues to kill it. Even in his like, even in a match that you would think wasn't one of his best matches, he still does a great job. A guy that shouldn't have no business being as good as he is. And he, he just flats out killed it. And so, uh, going into the next match, Bailey versus EO Sky for the WWE Women's Championship. And this was also a really good match. I love Bailey's entrance, uh, the Egyptian look and everything else. And she had the kind of like that put up in her uh, attire or whatnot. So it wasn't just part of the entrance, it was part of that. Um, during the match, uh, Bailey has a, a, a knee spot where, like, EO Sky works on that for the rest of the uh, rest of the night. And it was still actually a pretty good match. She was selling it really good. And I really enjoyed it. Bailey prevails as I predicted. And I just knew that they had to give it to her. EO had the championship for a good amount of time. And it was just time to get that title off of her. Plus, it seemed like they're really trying to build up Bailey. So what they're gonna do with her after this. For the next few months, how long she's going to have the rain and how long the rain is going like or what's consistent of it. Uh, we have yet to see, but I'm glad that she won the title in the way that she won it. I, I still feel like she needs to change that damn finisher belly to Bailey or Bailey to belly. It don't matter. She needs to change that. That don't need to be her finisher. She needs a different finisher. I love the elbow. The elbow drop looks sick when she dropped it. And uh, I'm glad that she won it. But this was a very, this was an awesome match. I really did a like. I really did a like. I really did like it. I uh, had a lot of close calls and good counters. And uh, EO, she killed it. Like, she was really good up in this match. Very cocky and all that stuff. I loved her personality, her energy in this match. She really went in and she killed it. Uh, both ladies did a great job. Really enjoyed the match. And then now we're going to go get into Roman Reigns versus Cody for the undisputed Universal WWE Championship, or however you want to put it, you know, that's on the line. Bloodline rules. Cody, last shot to finish his story. And this match, I really fucking enjoy. My worries for this match was the, was it going to be a clusterfuck? 
Was it going to be overproduced? Was it going to be like The Rock said, where everybody is going to be out there? Which I was surprised that it wasn't. You know, I'm thinking like The Rock is going to be out there. Uh, probably like special guest referee Solo going to be on the side of the ring, and then Jimmy going to be a, the the bell person. And I, they didn't have it like that. It started off like a regular match until the interferences started to happen. <laughs> But yeah, it just started off with the two. Um, and of course, bloodline rules means no disqualification. Anything goes, which I thought it was kind of weird, which I probably, in, if you logically think about it, I probably would have been like, bloodline rules means that anything goes for Roman Reigns. That if anybody interferes on Cody's behalf, then he automatically loses. Like, I would have had it like that. But in any case, logic suspension of disbelief throw it all out the window but uh yeah no dq so everything so a lot of it spilled outside the ring they went into a crowd for a bit and but this whole match itself was really a whole back and forth like it wasn't one dominating over the other like roman reigns didn't have like a strong domination over cody it was truly a back and forth between both men a lot of trash talk a lot of trash talking from roman as you would expect it and surprisingly uh roman Upon some of his trash talking, he tries, he did a uh, crossroads to Cody for the two count in which he said after that, he was like, he knew it wasn't going to work. He was like, that move sucks. He just wanted to do it da, 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 and all this stuff rubbing in his face and everything else went on with the trash talking. Cody uh, was uh, put through the table, the announcer's table, then hit with the Superman punch for the two count. And then after that, is when you got all this interference, when everything started to come together or whatnot. But it was like, basically line them up, line them up and everything else. Jimmy came out and interfered. Uh, then you had Jay come out for Cody. And he took, they he basically took himself and his brother out. Solo came in to help Roman. And he did everything that he could to help Roman win. But Cody just kept kicking out. And then that's when I knew that we was going to get Cena coming out. We had the rumors, and it only makes sense. And I just, like, was waiting, like, Cena going to come out. Cena going to come out. And then you heard the, oh, Avenue and everything else. So he came in, put Solo through a table, and then that's when you had The Rock come out. And then you had Cena and The Rock have a face-to-face. The -face. Uh, Cena get The Rock bottom. And then that's when you had Seth come out in the tactical outfit that he did with The Shield, with The Shield music with the shield music coming in with the chair about to hit the rock but then roman stops it uh and then then we get the surprise now i was expecting stone cold because that was part of the rumors with cena especially when you saw the scene where you know um a few weeks ago when the rock was beating up uh, Cody Rose, you saw the whole truck, the trailer truck with Cena and Stone Cold on there. You're thinking like, okay, yeah, that kind of throwing hints out. We knew we was going to see Cena. We knew we was going to see Stone Cold. Plus, I heard the uh, the reports and everything else, the rumors. But I was surprised that we didn't get any Stone Cold. I felt like that would have been a huge pop, a huge pop. But instead... We had The Undertaker. That was a surprise to me. I heard nothing about that. You heard the dome. The lights went out, came back on. The Rock is looking toward the Tigertron. And then you have The Undertaker just standing in back of him looking mean as hell. And then that's when The Rock turns around and he's about to hit him. But then The Undertaker grabs him, choke slams The Rock. Roman comes in with, well, actually, uh, before that, The Undertaker, the lights go out, then The Undertaker disappears. Roman has the chair about to hit Cody, but then he ends up hitting Rollins in the back as payback for when he turned on him when the shield first broke up and everything. So I thought that that was a really good callback. I, I was really, I, I, I kind of popped for that. I thought that was a really good callback. I'm, I'm surprised that they even did that. Uh, after that, from then on, that was close to the end of the match with Cody doing the triple crossroads to Roman and finally winning the match, winning the title, finishing the story that he, he has been talking about for like more than two years. Everybody has a story. Cody 
finally finished his story. And Samantha, again, filled with emotion for a second night. You could tell it in just the way she announced Cody Rose. She had to take her breath. She had to hold herself back. She was excited that Cody finally won the big one. And he literally can now say that he is WWE champion. I'm not going to say the full title, but he is WWE champion. I believe this is his first, yeah, his first world title in WWE. Crazy. Uh, then you had like a bunch of wrestlers come out. The people that helped him and other wrestlers from uh, like early or whatever came out to celebrate with him. The, the whole ring was filled up and it was a long ass celebration, like long. Like his mom came out, he handed the title to his mom and it was a very emotional. He had Triple H, he had Bruce Pritchard come out thanking them and everything else. CM Punk came out. It was a long one. Like I think the celebration probably lasts like over 10 minutes maybe about 15 because the 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 song just kept going his theme song just kept going it was like yeah i bet the the crowd couldn't get enough of that whoa and all that stuff but yeah it was a long ass celebration very emotional his wife came out actually with his entrance and came out at the end gave him a hug it was all there and they had the 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 fireworks and it was just crazy it was good i'm glad that they went this route and they did it i was gonna be so surprised and so fucking angry if they decided to make him to have him not win but i feel like uh i don't think they were gonna like go the other route uh and have him lose for a second time against him uh for the championship for the second year in a row but we did hear that Roman, and this probably played like a big, bigger, I ain't going to say a bigger, but a big part, that Roman's uh, leukemia has came up again. Not saying that like he got it, but I think it's like, it's been mentioned. Like, I don't know how big of a role is playing, but they still say he's in rem he's still in remission. But for some reason, this came up. So I don't know if it's something major where he's more than likely going to be off TV for a while. But I feel like we're going to hear more about that within the days coming. Maybe a nothing burger, but I mean, that's the way it is. Uh, so hopefully it's nothing where it came back or it's nothing affecting him. But I'm pretty sure that like Roman is going to have some a lot of time off because we talked to like, we've heard about that, like, he was going to take some time off, maybe do the Hollywood thing or whatnot, spend a little bit more time with the family, more than what he has been, because TV has not been seeing too much of Roman, but I feel like he's going to take a lot of time off, maybe return closer to um, SummerSlam. But in any case, that was night two of WrestleMania, a far superior match, or a far superior night than night one. And I really did enjoy this. Went through like a breeze. Great matches. Even matches that I didn't give two shits about. The, the Philly Street Fight was actually pretty good. I enjoyed it. Wasn't a Mania match, but I enjoyed it nonetheless. And they went the route of giving Cody the championship. Having him finish the story. Happy with that. Not happy with Damian Priest cashing in on Drew McIntyre. But I'm curious to see where they're going to go after this. Uh, I think CM Punk still got a ways to go with his recovery. I don't think he's he got physical, but it wasn't, you know, him actually getting hit. He wasn't really using the arm that was braced up. He was just stomping him and all that stuff. Minimum movement. So I don't think that they're building toward a match like next month during backlash or anything. But uh, I'm curious to see where they're going to go along with this. Uh, I hope Drew gets the title again this year. I just don't know. But hopefully they do it. I'm, a, I'm still a Drew guy. Still a Drew guy. But in any case, if you guys have made it this far and you've listened to me ramble on about WrestleMania 40, WrestleMania XL, the biggest WrestleMania of all time, um, thank you. And uh, go ahead and give me a like. Subscribe if you're not and hit that notification bell for more videos like this and I will catch you guys on the next one So peace out stay safe and I think everybody needs to do what Cody did tonight and that's finish your story Whatever your story is Don't let anything stop you